Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome for the first time. I'm Jim and I'm making tutorial videos around Luminar Neo. Lots of new users, lots of questions. I'm here to try and help. Um, I've got a playlist down below that you can check out. I'll also link to it up there. And uh, lots of videos about Neo and more stuff coming. This video in particular is about the color controls in the Curves tool, which is inside Develop. So, if you are not familiar with the Curves tool or how to use it, I've got a previous video that explains what Curves is and how it works. I'll put that up there. Please watch that first if you don't really have any idea what Curves is. And there's nothing wrong if you don't know what it is. It can be confusing. It's definitely an advanced tool, and there are definitely purists who use it all the time. I'm not one of those people. I use it some, um, and I understand the power, and um, I, I like to use it, but I don't use it all the time. And you don't have to use it but it's a great way to really learn tools and learn how the edits that you make impact your photos. So I'm going to be walking through curves in this video, but uh, like I said, if you're new to curves and haven't seen that first video, please watch that because I'm going to jump into some things here that um, you might need the reference from that first video in order to know what I'm talking about. Uh, second thing is, if you haven't yet subscribed and you're interested in this kind of stuff, please consider subscribing to my channel. Give me a thumbs up if you end up liking this video. That's a free way to support me, basically. It tells YouTube, hey, this guy's making something that I find useful. And then they share it with more people. My channel grows. And, um, you know, I guess that's good for me. I don't know. Anyway, I appreciate it. Anyway, let's get into it. Um, in this photo, I'm going to start in this first tab, which is really the overall tones. And I'm just going to put a gentle kind of S curve. Um, all I'm doing is creating a little bit more contrast, slightly brighter in the highlights, slightly darker in the shadows. There it is before, there it is now. And what I really want to do is get into color. So each of these three tabs represents uh, different colors. And so you've got red, you've got green, and you've got blue. You might have heard of that before, R, G, B, red, green, blue. Basically, these tabs correspond to the colors on the color wheel. Let me show you that. So this is something I found on the internet. Um, red, if you're on the red tab, the opposite of red is cyan, so that really kind of aquamarine kind of blue. If you're on the green tab, the opposite of green, as you can see, is magenta. Um, and then if you're on the blue tab, the opposite of blue is yellow. They're opposite on the color wheel and they're complementary colors. So just keep that in mind. The, uh, on each of those tabs, on the red tab, you're playing kind of between red and cyan. On the green tab, you're playing between green and magenta. And on the blue tab, you're, you're playing between blue and yellow. The cool thing is, because of the, how the tone curve and the curves tool works, you can isolate those colors into certain tonal areas within a photo highlights, midtones, and shadows. Again, I'm not explaining everything about where and how to use midtones and high, highlights, midtones, and shadows, because that was what that first video was about. But in red, um, you can just take this bottom uh, slider and just drag it one direction. If you go to the right, you see I'm getting all that cyan. And if I go to the left, you can see I'm getting red. Um, and that's basically hitting the midtones. But I don't really want it, uh, a bunch of red in the midtones on a photo like this. I might want some blue, kind of cyan, kind of richer, maybe aquamarine blue. Maybe I want some of that in the shadows, but I want some of that red in the highlights. Well, you can go about doing that by clicking and putting these little control points or anchor points. I don't know what they're called. I call them both. But you can drop those onto the uh, line here, and this represents the light values. The very bottom left is the shadows, and the very upper right is highlights, and then midtones would be smack dab in the middle, and then you know corresponding accordingly. So if I wanted a little bit richer blue aquamarine in the shadows, I'd be playing around down here. And so maybe I'd take this one and pull that down, and you can see what's happening. Like the darker areas are getting that richer blue. So when you see colors like that, you might, uh, you know, you might be viewing a photo that somebody used curves on, for example. So there we go. I've added a little bit of that. And in the highlight areas, the brighter areas, maybe I want a little bit red because, hey, it's a sunset. I want to amp up some of that kind of pinkish red, beautiful color. And that's what I'm doing by dragging this section up here. And I could even go a little bit more and drag some of that to get some of that pinkish warm look into the highlights. And now my photo looks like that, which is vastly different than how it started. So I started like that and I'm now looking like that. So may or may not be the color look that you want, but I wanted to point out how you can use these complementary colors in a photo and adjust accordingly, you know, putting some of one color into the highlights, some of a different color into the shadows. And again, you're kind of playing these complementary colors off of each other because you're uh, basically adding some of it 
of one of those colors to one part of the photo and some of the other color to a different part of the photo. Um, the point is really season to taste, number one, and number two, experiment, have fun, check it out. Um, you also may see uh, people do things that are really colorful and you know, I hate to say fake, but obviously fake. I mean, I see photos all the time and to be clear, I love colors and I, I love photos like this, but they're over the top saturated and really kind of fake where they might just have a ton of you know really uh, warm and pink kind of stuff. Whoa, uh, not like that, let me reset that. Um, you can just double click to reset it, but they might have something going like that and then maybe something really deep and dark and blue down in some of the shadow areas and they create kind of a fantastical fantasy kind of look. Um, Maybe not necessarily a good look on this photo, but if you see photos like that, it's very possible that people are playing around with the Curves tool and just applying colors um, wherever they want to put them, right? So um, again, you can double click these dots to get rid of them and it basically resets it to how it was. That's how it was. Now, if you just wanted to gently take um, a color um, and apply it across the photo, like so for example, if I gently drag the midtone slider to the right, I'm kind of gently getting more of that aquamarine, kind of that cyan color in uh, the entire photo pretty much. Whereas if I kind of gently go to the left, I'm getting a little bit more of that warm or that red. So that looks kind of nice, right? So again, experiment, season to taste. And what I generally do is go in and I'll pick specific tonal areas, highlights, midtones, or shadows, and pick and apply a color to them. So that's what I would have done on red. I've now reset that. I wanna show you something that you can do with green and magenta. Again, a sunset. I picked a sunset on purpose because I would generally be applying these kind of colors to sunset, golden hour, twilight, uh, you know, sunrise, any of those edges of the day kind of times when the light is soft, and you might have some color, I would use the colors component here uh, in curves to amp that up. So once again, I'm on green, and if I wanna just drag the midtone slider one direction, you can see I'm getting magenta. So that also tells you, okay, magenta is gonna be basically, you know, the line is flat. If I'm going to the right or down from that line, I'm getting to the magenta, whereas if I go back this way, I'm getting into the green. And if you go very far, you get a lot of green, I, I don't use that a whole lot unless it's like a woodland scene where there's a lot of green like plants and trees and you might want to amp that up. It could work there. Uh, green does not work in a sunset, just to be clear. So in this case, I want to get magenta, but again, it's a sunset. I don't really need magenta in the shadows. I like the shadows maybe like they are, but I want to get some into the highlights. So I'm going to come in and drop uh, a couple of anchor points here. And, and sometimes I'll use them as anchor points instead of control points, which means I'm anchoring that piece of the line in place because uh, let me, let me just move this. If I don't, and let's say I just drag this really far, you can see that this other line down here on the left, kind of that bottom half of the line starts to move as well. And I don't want to do that. And so what I'll often do is if I drop control points in here, uh, I need to make them straight though. If I drop control points in here, um, it's going to keep that line from moving very much. So maybe I'll add a couple of more and then I'll come up here to highlights and just kind of gently pull some of that magenta into the highlights and you can kind of see what's happening. I'm getting some pink kind of uh, layer in those really bright parts of the sky. So maybe I need a little bit more um, of the uh, not quite as high highlights, if that makes sense. Maybe I need a little bit more pink to kind of even it out. And maybe I'll come down here and now take this. And as I'm basically moving down the line, I'm getting closer to the midtones. And so just keep that in mind. You know, each of these points on a line is representing a tonal value. The very top right corner is the brightest highlights. The very bottom left corner is the darkest shadows. And then you have a varying degree um, of light as you go up. And what I'm doing is picking a color and putting it into that uh, section of the photo co that corresponds to that light value, if that makes sense. So it's going to look different if you come in here and drop multiple points and move things. But what I've done is basically taken a photo that looked like that and turned it into something that looks like that, where I've got this nice kind of magenta pink, kind of soft, beautiful sunset, kind of a cotton candy looking sunset. And honestly, I think it looks fantastic. Now, here's another thing you can do. You could come in and say, I really like that 
but I want some of that aquamarine in the shadows so I could go back to red and I could drop some control points so that I'm not adjusting any of the red into the highlights, uh, but then just come over here and maybe pull some of the shadows and add a little bit of aquamarine. And I don't really know if this is gonna look good, but uh, maybe I wanted something like that where I just want a little bit more of that color into the shadow area. So you can basically come in and combine moves on each of these different tabs, the red, the green, and the blue, and it will show up in your photo. So that's my photo before, and there it is now. Um, I'm actually gonna reset everything that I've done here, and you can kind of see how it's going back to um, kind of unedited on the red tab. Uh, let me close that. Um, uh, but on green, all my green stuff is still there. So. That's how you can combine things on different tabs to control the color. And then let's just, uh, let's say I like that, but maybe, you know, blue and, uh, remember it's blue and yellow. If you go back and look, blue opposite is yellow. So again, complementary colors. Um, you could come in here and say, well, what happens if I drag this to the right? Okay, uh, I'm hitting midtones, which generally applies to a whole lot of an image, unless it's a really high contrast image. You know, lots of bright, bright whites and lots of really dark blacks. But otherwise, most images have a fair amount of midtones, in my experience. So, um, if you just want to see what happens when you apply some of that color, that's why I grabbed the midtone slider because I feel like it hits a whole lot of the photo. Again, you can double click down here to reset it. So, if you like that and you don't like it, just double click. Um, so what I learned is, hey, dragging it to the right is going to get me more yellow. I don't like yellow here. It looks terrible on that uh, wet beach. It looks terrible in the sky, especially with the other colors. But maybe I like a little bit of blue. So I could come in here and just take the midtones and gently go a little bit left and just adjust that again in tandem with what I've already done here with the magenta on this green tab. And I could also go back and re-add the stuff that it did with the aquamarine here in the shadows. So lots of power and lots of control, but that's how I approach color. It's basically, you know, looking at the color wheel and keeping that in mind, you know, and that's just a reference point so that you know which colors you're getting on each tab, but also keep in mind that you know that by just moving that mid-tone slider and you can see, oh, I'm getting a lot of yellow or I'm getting a lot of blue. Okay, so those are the opposite colors. I'm getting a lot of green or magenta, et cetera. So uh, it's not really rocket science, but for me, um, this is a very much, um, for lack of a better word, there's not a scientific method to follow. This is definitely season to taste, uh, go by feel or you know look however it looks to you. Just do what you like and experiment because I don't ever look at a photo and say, oh, I'm gonna click you know these seven control points on two different color tabs in the curves tool and get the exact result I want. Um, there are probably people that are like that. I'm not one of them. I don't edit that way. I, I go by feel and I have to go in and kind of I don't want to say I'm knocking around in the dark, you know, that's not the case, but you got to put some control points out there. You got to move things around and that's how I figure out what I like. Um, and in fact, I didn't even have a script for this video because I didn't know exactly uh, what I was going to do or what I was going to uh, end up with, but I end up with something like this, doing a few things here um, on uh, green, uh, primarily on, yeah, I think I did a little bit of blue, did it? Yeah, yeah, I got a little bit going with blue, um, and you know, I could get a lot more if I wanted, I don't want to overdo it, so I just want a little bit of that blue, but I did most of my work here in the magenta. My point is, it's experimentation pretty much for me every time, but the a color wheel, again, is a very important thing to keep track of and keep uh, top of mind. Um, and then just experiment, have fun, mess around. Just keep in mind, from the bottom left, you're at the darkest bits of the photo. And in the upper right, you're at the brightest parts of the photo. And everything is a some gradient from dark to bright along that line. So where you're putting these control points is going to correspond to uh, which sort of tonal value in the photo you're applying the specific color to. Have fun, experiment, you're not gonna break anything. It's really useful, and frankly, I think it gives you a great sort of mind for um, editing photos and thinking about light and color, which are really like two of the main things for me when I'm editing a photo. I think of light and color and detail. Um, you're getting both light and color control with these uh, tabs here in the Curves tool. So, highly recommend experimenting, having fun, and I hope this gives you some idea of how that works and how the color controls work Again, if you didn't see that first video, it's probably better to start with that one than this one. But regardless of how you start, I recommend starting. Just play around. I was afraid of curves for years, to be honest. And then at one point, I just said, you know, dang it, I got to get in there and I got to learn this thing. Um, and I learned by just knocking around and, you know, 
making things look terrible, to be honest. And eventually you get a feel for it. I will say the key thing is I tend to move things very gently instead of making big moves. I tend to do them very gently. As you can see here, these are very small moves. The curve, uh, that straight line is not very curved. There's a little bit more in the highlights and it's pretty flat down here in the shadows. And yet the overall look in the photo is went from that to that. So even an accumulation of small moves does have a big impact. Hope it helps my friends. That's how I use color on the curves tool to impact my photos. Um, if you've got any questions, leave them down below. I will do my best to answer and you guys take care of yourselves. Thanks for hanging out, sticking around, coming back, interacting, leaving comments, thumbs up, subscribing, all those kind of things. I appreciate it. it means a lot. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, you guys take care of yourselves and adios.